Hello YouTube, welcome to another one of my dueling videos and today I have for you a survival's end deck I've been farming, you know, the uh, the new character at the gate so I could get some of these cards and uh, I think it's a really good card, it's it's really fun to use, dinos have always been fun in duelings ever since, you know, I believe they were like the first meta uh, dinosaur kingdom vanilla dragons, I mean vanilla dinosaurs so every time I get to play with some dinosaurs, it always takes me back to the simpler days of Duel Links. So um, this card, if you're not familiar with it, it says destroy as many normal monsters on the field as possible. And if you do, a special summon level 4 or lower dinosaur type monsters from your deck up to the number destroyed but destroy them during the end phase. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one dinosaur type monster you control and one card your opponent controls, destroy them. The crazy thing about this is that you can activate the effect the same turn. You can activate both effects during the same turn. You can activate multiple survival ends during the same turn. And the craziest thing to me is that you can activate multiple survival ends uh, traps from your graveyard. Uh, you know, you can banish multiple of them and target the same dinosaur type monster, and you will still get multiple destructions i think that's really really cool and um yeah it, it overall makes for a very fun deck so normal monsters is relevant with um all the paleozoics a lot of people obviously run canadias you will destroy their canadias uh if they're on the field when you use survival's end if you activate survival's end chain a canadia to put it on the field you will destroy your canadia and get an extra dinosaur uh for that turn I'm running two Megalo Smasher uh, so that I can also trigger my survival end. And but the main card that I'm trying to combo survival survival's end with is uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Hamstrat. As you guys know, tokens are considered normal monsters. So if you destroy the two tokens that Hamstrat summon, you get to summon two dinosaurs from your deck. So that that was kind of what I was trying to go for here. That's why we have the three uh, Hamstrat to go with the three survival ends. So two Megalo Smasher. Two Canadia, two enemy controller. This is all pretty standard. Enemy controller is good because those monsters are going to be destroyed during the end phase. So if you can econ take to try to go for game or to get an extra attack, it's worth it because the monster is going to be destroyed otherwise. Uh, also, having tokens for econ take, it's really good. Uh, I threw in one survival of the fittest. This is the only copy I have. It says target one dinosaur type monster you control, equip this card to that target, it gains 1000 attack. When the attacking monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can activate this effect. The equipped monster can make a second attack on an opponent's monster in a row. That is crazy because it can help you OTK um, against a lot of decks. Especially if you put it on a, on a giant rex who is going to get to 3300 on their dinosaur kingdom, which is crazy. Uh, the downside to giant rex is that he cannot attack directly. But... Um, if this card is banished, you can special summon this card, and if you do, this card gains 200 attack for each of your banished dinosaur type monsters. You can only use this effect once per turn. So it's really cool because if you banish it with Salamandra, you, you get the special summon it back. If you go up against um, Amazonas and they banish it with Onslaught, you get to summon it back. So Giant Rex is cool. Uh, it has great attack, it just sucks that it can't attack directly. And last but not least, we have Evil Swarm Salamandra. The reason why I have three of him is because I can easily get to my Giant Rex and Megalo Smasher using my Survival Ends card. And this is probably the most important dinosaur because he's gonna let you recycle your Giant Rex from the graveyard by banishing them. And he can also get you know bigger as, um, as you banish dinosaurs with its effect. I threw in two double Cyclones just so that if I didn't have any tokens, this card wasn't completely dead. I could still use use it with double cycling to destroy an opponent's back row and then use the effect from the graveyard even if I didn't use the initial effect. Um, but looking back, I, I, I almost wish I would have used Bad Aim instead of double cycling because Bad Aim would have helped me trigger my uh, Canadia and uh, you know I wouldn't have to focus on back row. I could also destroy monsters with Bad Aim. But I, this is how I use the deck, so that's why you still see the double cyclones here. But you can use bad aim, like I mentioned. So let's go ahead and show you guys some replays real quick.
I was kind of bummed that Survival of the Fittest didn't come back as a reward this time around. I know you can get one from the EX um, card trader, but the uh, the Rex event only gave me one. And I actually farmed him, so I was pretty upset. But at least I'll get a second copy, and I guess that should be plenty. So we are going second against Odeon. And immediately we're going to see Amazon, Amazonist Princess get an Amazonist Onslaught. Set two and pass. So we're gonna start by uh, forcing the back row. I'm gonna go ahead and use Giant Rex because like I mentioned, if he were to banish it with Onslaught, I'm just gonna get my Giant Rex back. Uh, and we get to force a Canadia by doing this, which is even greater. Uh, now we have an enemy controller and a survival of the fittest. Amazon's Princess can get rid of our monster, so I don't know why he chose to attack with it without using the um, the Amazon is Onslaught, and I thought, oh, okay, he knows about Giant Rex, so that's why he's not banishing. But he chooses to banish here when he could have just let it go to the grave, um, and you know, I wouldn't have gotten my monster back. Luckily for me, I get my Giant Rex back. I'm gonna summon uh, Salamandra, go for the Econ Take, banish the Giant Rex, get him back, and now I can go for game. We are going to attack the Amazon Source Woman. This time, he doesn't banish it. But at this point, he could have banished it because I wasn't going to get it back. I've already summoned it once. And next, we're attacking the Amazonas Princess. I'm going to activate Survival of the Fittest so that I have plenty of damage to win the game. Otherwise, uh, he would have lived with 50 life points. And we definitely don't want that. So yeah, you swarm the board with this deck. Uh, you take advantage of plays like Econ Take. You know, get an extra summon. And you just push for game. That's the basic strategy. Here we're going up against Joey Wheeler. <laughs> and this time we're going first and we have a hand strat. We don't have survival, so survival's end, but this will still help us, uh, you know, to not get OTK'd and stuff. So we're going up against Buster Blader, which does suck because obviously if he turns your uh, dinosaurs into dragons, you can use survival's end from the uh, graveyard. So here I have two tokens after I got rid of the wealth. I'm gonna let him destroy this. It wasn't worth it for me to flip my survival, survival's end, summon two dinos and then do nothing for that turn and then they just die. So instead I'm just gonna summon one using the Mecha Phantom Beast. And I'm gonna get a giant Rex on the field. So he goes for the DNA surgery and this is great because now my uh, survival's end is in the graveyard. So he should he should have actually chained this to my original survival's end and that would have been a better play. But now that he started a new chain, I can just chain my survival's end, destroy it before he turns my dinosaur into a dragon, summon Salamandra, banish Rex, summon him back and go for game. We're gonna see the flute of summoning Kribo. That's cute. I have an enemy controller and they scoop. So yeah, enemy controller, super good. Still in 2019, uh, crazy. But I love, I love when you get to play around a wing Kribo like that. Whether you switch it to attack mode to <clears throat> damage your opponent through it, or you just econ take and attack for game. Because it's it's kind of dumb when you think about it. When you can just set one card, being uh, Wing Kribo, and be like, all right, I can't lose. If you destroy it by battle, you can't damage me. If you destroy it by card effect, you still can't damage me. <clears throat> so we're going first against Mokuba. I'm going to summon Giant Rex, set all my back row. We have Survivals and Survival of the Fittest. Uh, going up against uh, Vampires. I thought he was going to go for like a Vampire Band play or something like that. Uh, but he makes a very conservative play. Sets two, just searches for a uh, takeover. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack using my uh, giant Rex. And now that he's uh, he's used vampire takeover, I'm gonna try to go for a game right here. So he's gonna summon familiar, pay another 500, doodle out his life points. I'm gonna activate survival of the fittest. Hit him for 1100. This is gonna let me do an additional attack, and I have an enemy controller in my hand. However, I have to make room, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my double cyclone after I check for a Kribo. Get rid of the floodgate, activate my enemy controller, 
switch the uh, familiar into attack position and GG. Survival of the fittest, man. So, so good. This is this was literally my first time using that card because, like I mentioned, I didn't get uh, even two copies of it, so I never bother trying to make a deck around it. But a very, a very good one of in this build. Next, we have a Crowler. And this guy, he actually had the game, but he made a crucial mistake. And that is why I saved this replay, so you guys will not make the same mistake he made. Uh, he's gonna go uh, Breaker. Pretty good opening hand for him. Immediately goes into Ancient Gear Reactor. Has a back row set. And he has Middle Age Mechs. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set all my back row. Go for Megalo Smasher and try to destroy this um, Breaker, the Magical Warrior. Galaxy Cyclone onto my survivals and I'm gonna go ahead and activate this. This didn't really, uh, it didn't really had a lot of meaning because my survivals end was gonna go to the graveyard anyways. But by summoning Rex, I, I'm setting up my next turn which is Salamandra, Banish into Rex. And I'm also thinning my deck. It's gonna go for uh, Ancient Gear Wyvern, get another Reactor Dragon. And I'm gonna go ahead and destroy the um, Ancient Gear Reactor during the battle phase. I could have used Canadia, but I wanted to just go ahead and destroy it, even though I have to take 2000 damage right here. Uh, we're gonna pick up a second Survival's End. Summon Salamandra, get a Giant Rex on the field after we banish it, and we force a Canadia. And that Canadia comes big later on. Actually, it's not that one, it's, a, it's another one. Spoilers much. So he's gonna use uh, Ancient Gear Castle to summon a reactor. I'm gonna have to Canadia that right away. He chooses not to summon the the Canadia, and the reason he does that is because he knows I have survivals and so I'm just gonna destroy it. And I mean he doesn't know I have it right now, but he knows I run it. So he didn't want to give me a free summon basically by setting and summoning a normal for me. Uh, I pick up an enemy controller, so I'm just gonna set that. I didn't expect a um, Ancient Gear Fortress here because that's gonna give him a second Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon. So I'm gonna have to Canadia one of them, get my Canadia on board, and use Survival Survival's End because I needed you know I needed a normal on the field in order to activate it. So now that my Survival's End is in the graveyard, I can go ahead and destroy the giant Rex that I just summoned, that is going to be destroyed at the end phase anyway and get rid of the other ancient reactor. I pick up a Megalo Smasher and I could have banished a giant Rex here to uh, to summon a giant Rex, but I'm trying to go for a game. I didn't know what this card was, but I could feel a delay. However, I'm running out of resources and I have to make my play right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack with giant Rex to flip the ancient gear reactor dragon face up. Now I can econ take and this is the crucial mistake he did. I'm gonna activate enemy controller to econ take. If he lets the ancient gear reactor dragon come here, he wins because he has a Canadia. So once ancient gear reactor dragon comes to my side of the board, he can stop either one of these attacks and he will survive. And then he has an ancient gear reactor dragon. But because he chained it to my enemy controller, I'm gonna be able to special summon the Canadia from my grave and this ancient gear, instead of coming to my side of the field, now that there's no space, it just goes to the grave. I get the monster that I needed for the extra attack, and I win the game. All he had to do was let that chain resolve. He got trigger happy, and I was able to win the game that way. I thought that was a pretty cool interaction. I wonder if he, uh, if he realized that he made a mistake, or if he was just too salty to even think about it. And for this last replay, we have a Bandit Key. And this was a very close match, back and forth, as a matter of fact. Top deck for top deck. Switcheroo for switcheroo. So we're going first, we have our Mecha Phantom Beast. And here, I thought I was going to lose. Uh, 100%, I was like, okay, we're going to see a um, Grace. He's going to destroy my Mecha Phantom Beast. And I'm not gonna get my tokens. But he makes some weird plays. 
But look at this. Look at this right here. So he just paid a thousand life points, which means his switcheroo is active. Look at what this man does. He, he activates Vampire Kingdom, goes for switcheroo. Look at the card he draws into. Hey, true nade off of switcheroo. I was so tilted. And I was like, okay, here's where uh, Vampire Grace comes in and I lose. But he actually summons a Scarlet, so my tokens are going to hit the field and I'm not going to take any damage. But yeah, I was very salty about the hate grenade switcheroo. It's like, seriously? So my Megalo Smasher is going to get rid of that uh, Gasuki. And look at this uh, incredible effect right here. Uh, he's going to go for switcheroo again. Goes into Vampire Grace, so twice. Twice he gets some destiny draw switcheroo shenanigans. So as soon as this hits the board, I have to activate my survival's end. Destroy my Megalo Smasher, summon another one. He's gonna go for, um, you know, the Claire card, go for Giant Rex. And this is fine because now I have a survival's end. So he goes to destroy my back row, I let him destroy the back row. And now that he goes for the attack, I can chain, or I can activate both of my survival's end. Target one dinosaur and get rid of both his Grace and his uh, Scarlet Scorch. I only take 17. I top deck into a Salamandra. Salamandra is going to bring me two monsters to the field. I'm like, okay, I win. Nope, my man was not done uh, top decking. He gets a Vampire Grace off the top of the deck and he has just enough life to pay for the uh, domain. Which actually, I don't know why he paid for the domain, now that I think about it. Either way, um, pretty clutch a draw. He's gonna activate Vampire Kingdom, destroy my Salamandra, and then top deck for top deck, I get an enemy controller, and we're gonna finish this with an Econ take to the face. Pretty spicy duel, I thought. Um, I can't believe he kept getting those top decks, but in the end, it was my top deck that mattered, so I'm not even mad. But yeah, very fun uh, dinosaur deck. I think there's a ton of potential in this uh, with this card. I wanna I wanna try different builds. It's just the first thing that came to mind was uh, my boy Hamstrand that I haven't used in a really really long time. I used to put this guy on every deck, so it was nice to use him again. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. Join my Discord if you haven't. The link will be down in the description. I love my PayPal link if you guys want to support my channel, support my content. I really really appreciate that. And until next time.